and welcome to Meldon Law and Friends, a service of Meldon Law, a statewide law firm with its primary office in Gainesville, Florida, and also with offices in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Today is Friday, December 4th, 2020, and to say we've got a big show, well, that would be an understatement. Headball coach to the left, Meldon's to the right. Jeffrey Meldon, great day, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, we're uh, so glad you could join us, Coach, and uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, this uh, big deal we got coming up as far as uh, Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. Yeah, we're really looking forward to the opening. Uh, we plan to open, I think, March of 2021, and uh, we, uh, we, we've we really got a beautiful location and, and site there, at Celebration Point, right off Archer Road. Uh, so I'm looking for a place to hang out. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a big restaurant. We got that rooftop bar called Visors, where mm -hmm. you can sort of look out over the, uh, the interstate and toward the university, uh, toward the stadium, and so forth. So uh, we're really looking forward to the, uh, the restaurant getting open. Well, one of the things I wanted to ask you is, uh, I know you just celebrated a, a big birthday uh, this this year, and how do you stay in such good shape? Well, I think I was lucky to get some good genes as far as uh, hair. You got good hair too. Yeah. Both uh, these melons are in great shape. Trust I was, me. Uh, I was fortunate on the hair thing, and, uh, and I do like working out. I'm sort of a workout guy. So treadmill and bike nowadays is about it, and so forth. But I, I enjoy getting a good sweat. Uh, it's, I'm at the point where working out is more fun than playing golf now. But <laughs> golf game is not what it used to be. But but I mean, but, looking uh, forward, you, you, it looks to me like you're not looking in the rearview mirror. I'm gonna try not to. Yeah. <laughs> so so to. how did you come up with this concept for this for the gridiron bar and grill? Well, actually, Freddie Weeby uh, and some gentlemen here in town approached me about it, okay. and uh, we felt like Gainesville needed a really good first class restaurant, and. Uh, We'll have several big rooms where you can have 10, 15 people in and so forth at night. And uh, excellent menu of all types. So uh, we hope, hope to be able to serve everybody. And obviously a lot of TV screens all over the place. So we'll emphasize the sports part. And uh, I get a chance to put some uh, memorabilia in there. I've got a Heisman Trophy that. Uh, so the Heisman Trophy do itself. Good in my closet at the house. So a lot of people have asked me that. Yeah. They actually can see the Heisman oh, Trophy yeah. if they come to the restaurant. Yeah, the Heisman plus uh, a bunch of other trophies that I'm probably just as proud of, <laughs> and so forth. Well, you know, it's pretty cool because this is not just some little restaurant. This is one of the biggest restaurants in the whole state of Florida. Well, I think it will be right there with some of the biggest, uh, certainly. And uh, we're looking forward to getting open and uh, making it a fun place to be. So I'm a foodie. Yeah. What kind of food are you going to have on the menu? We're going to have a little bit <laughs> of, of what everybody likes, I hope. Uh, but uh, we'll have some steaks, uh, but also some pasta, uh, Italian dishes. And uh, we'll have some uh, burgers of uh, the type that are not too fattening and all that. <laughs> so, uh, it'll be a little bit of what everybody likes. I, I really believe that. Well, I'm amazed at the preparation uh, that you and Freddie and the rest of the team have put in. Can you just talk about some of that uh, preparation uh, that's been going on? Well, Freddie and the group have done most of it. I, I, I've looked in on some of the interviews. Uh, Drew Johnson is our general manager of the store. He's had uh, numerous years uh, with Outback uh, Restaurant Organization. And so we've been hiring people gradually. Uh, we're not going to really need the full group until, uh, well, February, March, and so forth. But we got uh, uh, the interviews lined up, and I've been over there watching the construction of the restaurant and uh, putting all of it together. So it's, it's a big project. So how does the putting together this team compared to uh, putting together a great college football team? Probably similarly. Probably a lot of similarities. Uh, first of all, you, you want the person in the leadership role to start with, and then it works all the way down uh, through the, all the employees. And uh, we got to have people that are upbeat and have that wonderful attitude, just like all you guys know. <laughs> and to be successful in life, you better have a good attitude or so, nobody wants to be around you. So yeah, so sense, Coach. We want to make it a fun place and yeah. a place where everybody feels comfortable to come. So I understand, though, this has really been a family affair. Uh, your daughter, Amy, I understand, had something to do with the conceptualizing of this. Is that right? 
Oh, she made a suggestion uh, several <laughs> years ago, several years ago. Uh, but really, I think Fred Weeby and uh, Swin Okavokan, yeah. did I say that right, uh, came up with the ideal. We, we had the location there. Let's, let's put a first-class restaurant uh, right here. But I, I also here. heard that your wife, Jerry, that we might be uh, having her uh, cookies there, the famous cookies. The Toll House cookies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my wife, Jerry, would make uh, cookies uh, for the football team, the players, uh, every time they had a birthday. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she she's made <laughs> thousands of cookies. And, and those cookies are very good. The players eventually learned they had to lock them in their locker or the guys would come by and sort of borrow one or two. <laughs> it, it. it didn't last very long. Uh, but she can make that, uh, some pecan pies around Thanksgiving. That's about the only time I eat those pecan pies now. So I had several pieces just uh, last week also. <laughs> Coach, I wanted you to tell us a little bit about some of these uh, private rooms and how you're going to be setting up some of the rooms for recruits and some of that uh, going on. Well, I tell you, I, I, I sort of enjoy those places where you can have your own private room if you have uh, some of your friends and wives and so forth. And uh, It actually probably started for me back in high school. We had a steakhouse in Johnson City called the Peerless Steakhouse. And they, had, they had about eight rooms, so you put eight, ten people in there. So when I was being recruited, back then the coaches could come to town and take you out to dinner. So uh, that's why I waited. I didn't sign until March after my senior year. I wanted to make sure you were well set. Coaches would come in and uh, they'd say, Where do you want to go to eat? And I said, There's a place called the Peerless Steakhouse. So I was eating those really good steaks, not those little dollar, two dollar steaks that my mom uh, would bring home and so forth. So that's probably, uh, and then the coaches could give you their recruiting talk uh, at the restaurant. Uh, that's sort of illegal nowadays. You can't take kids out to dinner like you could back then. Mm -hmm. But, uh, that was uh, that was something that I looked forward to way back in the '60s, and uh, but uh, for meetings and so forth, we'll have those rooms available for our clients. Well, that's really exciting because I understand the museum is going to be a first-class museum where you can really show off uh, some of the um, awards and honors that you've been given over the years. Yeah, it's like a big old trophy case. Yeah, hopefully we can squeeze <laughs> a bunch of things in there that. Uh, that I'm proud of and been fortunate and blessed. And, of course, most of us got to do all with the Gators. Uh, but there will be a few high school things in there and, and mostly uh, some coaching, uh, championship, uh, things of that nature. So let me ask you this. Some of your contemporaries have tried the same thing. Mike Shanahan, a longtime friend of yours, did the same thing. Urban Meyer's got a restaurant, Tiger Woods, Troy Aikman. How is yours going to be different? And we know better. Ah, well, hopefully it'll be, uh, well, hopefully some of them will hopefully be just like uh, yeah. Mike Shanahan's. It's been very successful out in the Denver area. Uh, but we hope to, uh, yeah, sort of copy, emulate some things that they've done to be successful and maybe not do some things that they wish they hadn't done. You, know, you, learn, uh, you learn from successful people as well as those that haven't done all that well. Uh, but we feel like uh, we've got an excellent plan in place. Now we've got to execute it and keep doing it uh, time after time, week after week, year after year. Well, you know what was the most exciting thing I saw was uh, up top, the what do you call it, the visor? Visor bar. Bar or something. Visor's Outdoor Lounge, I think, is what we call it. I can't it. imagine where you keep up with that name, <laughs> Visor Bar. I'd have to really yeah. think. <laughs> yes, it's interesting. The, the visors are pretty well all over the country now. And uh, in fact, I think I saw Bill Belichick wear one the other day. It was wide brim, right? I like the wide brim that you do. Well, <laughs> they have wide or tiny. They, yeah. they, they've sort of evolved. But it's a rooftop time. bar, right? Yeah, rooftop bar. Mm -hmm. So uh, and hopefully down here in Gainesville, of course, we should have excellent weather to leave it open Most just about the time. all the time. Yeah, you know, that was, you know, uh, we were talking earlier about, you know, the swamp is down now, but they had that uh, beautiful outdoor area, and mm -hmm. it's going to be really exciting having a place to go where you can be outside and enjoy this beautiful weather that we have. I think so. Yeah, I know I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I know a lot of my buddies have uh, mm -hmm. said, I can't wait to get on that rooftop bar up oh, yeah. there. And, of course, we'll have the televisions and so forth to, to watch sporting events and so forth. Well, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the Gators now. Yep. You obviously started things off. Uh, mm -hmm. I was a young attorney living in Jacksonville, and you turned the whole culture around. I know you're very proud of all those teams that you coached over the years, but things look pretty darn exciting. 
Uh, here we are, what, uh, seven and one. We go into the game tomorrow against Tennessee. <laughs> You've had more than your fair share of uh, history at Tennessee. Yeah, it is a huge game. Tennessee has not uh, played all that well lately, uh, but they're very capable. Uh, they sort of thought they were going to have a big year. So we, we've got to really be ready. Uh, you know, historically, we've, uh, we've lost some games to Tennessee in December. I remember so, that uh, one with Rex. The one here, <laughs> yeah, they ran the ball for – one guy ran for 225 yards, Travis Stevens, and we we didn't score touchdowns that night, and we lost by two points. But uh, we've uh, we, we've had some really good games with Tennessee, won some close ones, lost some close ones. But uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully our guys can put them away by coming <laughs> touchdowns. So we you did, you did awfully well against Tennessee. I mean, Peyton Manning. Oh, uh, for oh for four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he. He, he didn't beat us, but uh, we lost the, the next year to the game up there. <laughs> yeah, that's overtime, Ray Martin. Overtime game that uh, could have, would have. But so let me ask nice. you this. You were number 11 quarterback. You won the Heisman Trophy. Mm -hmm. Now we've got a new number 11. Who's going to be on your ballot for the Heisman Trophy? <laughs> oh, definitely. Uh, definitely Kyle Trask. I really think that Heisman is going to come down to our game against Alabama. I think you're uh, right. Their quarterback, yeah. Mac Jones, has played extremely well also. You know, he's from Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Alabama quarterback, uh, but we, we we need to take care of Tennessee first. This week, the game tomorrow, <laughs> and then uh, and then I think we we'll play LSU after that, and then hopefully Alabama. But we need to clinch the East by beating Tennessee this week. Coach, I have a quick question. Uh, you were here in the mid '60s, right, Gainesville? Now we're here in 2020. The city has changed quite a bit since I was I was born in 1978. In the '80s and '90s, uh, you know, you came in and. The, Gainesville kind of changed after that, and it got bigger and bigger. Uh, how did you choose Celebration Point to be the, the focus point of your uh, restaurant? Was that a collaborative uh, decision with Freddie, or was that something that you wanted to be, be near, uh, you know, uh, that area of town? Uh, it was a team team uh, decision, and oh, it's uh, with uh, Squin, uh, Sven Durkin. Sven, Durkin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Easy to say his name. Uh, you know, he's the general manager of the, the project out there, Celebration Point. So it was an ideal location, right off I-75, Archer right. Road there, and uh, within a view of town and so forth. So it was the ideal location. I, I moved down to Fort Lauderdale. I come back here, and it's changed five All years. It's changed. like a brand-new yeah. uh, city. Uh, it, there, I was I heard today what Cheesecake Factory was the most profitable restaurant in Gainesville. I didn't even know we had a cheesecake factory. <laughs> I, well, you've been gone too long. I didn't even know we had one. I, I knew there was a BJ's brew house, but I didn't know we had the same Now sensor. they're only going to be talking <laughs> about Spurrier's <laughs> rooftop yeah, grill. Yeah, but, Archer yeah. Road, you know, that's where all the action is just about now. Well, we want yeah. Spurrier's Gridiron yeah. Grill to be the number one profitable restaurant. In, we got uh, an Kansas opportunity Hall. to do that. I got to ask you about something else. Your last coaching gig, Orlando Apollos. Now, I lived in Orlando 27 years, and we were so excited by how well you were doing. And yeah. then, unfortunately, the whole thing caved, but that had to be a great experience. Yeah, that was one of the most fun uh, coaching years. Really, I've had. <laughs> Lee Cor Corso, who lives in Orlando, we all know Coach Corso. He told me that was the best coaching job I ever did. How about that? And, yeah, uh, took a team said, from nothing to the I championship. Said, come on now, we're all those years with the Gators. Uh, but he he seemed to say a seven and one record in pro football and two games better than our any of the competition was pretty good. But we did have a good team down there, and the players had really good attitudes, and that's why you have a chance to win. A lot, and we were declared the champion. Although the and you were given a championship ring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, so. <laughs> we had a ring and a trophy made up. And uh, FanDuel, the online betting site out of Vegas, declared us the champion because you could bet, you know, before the season started sure. on who you thought would win the championship. So they wanted to pay everybody off. So they said the Apollos <laughs> are the champs. Yes. So is there any chance you could ever coach again? Ah, uh, you know who knows? Uh, one of those never spring, say never. yeah, one of those spring <laughs> leagues of some nature, so forth, uh, where you coach about three or four months a year. Uh, that would be more my kind of stuff. Well, you know, in, in the lawyer profession, you get better and better and better. Okay, mm -hmm. and then all of this a sudden they go, oh, well, oh, well, you're this age, so yeah. you know you must want to retire. And go, no, I'm just getting getting exactly. the hang of it. You know, everybody, and we got a president that's what 78 now, 77, yeah. 78. Uh, so I'm way younger than him. There you go. Well, well yeah. I, I looked at all the leaders of the country. I, I'm uh, your age, by the way. Okay. And uh, they're all older than us. You know, uh, <laughs> Pelosi, you know, Mitch McConnell, 
Pre oh. uh, Biden, all of them are older than us, so we're just uh, in the sweet spot. So I've got to ask another. I got to bring up another coaching thing. Now I promised my kids I would do this. As hard as it is to believe, I coached a player in Pop Warner football that was coached by the head ball coach, Patrick Demarco. I, I was his head coach when he was ten years old at Lake Brantley High School, Lake Brantley Pop Warner. Patrick and I always ask people. He's right there in the second row, and I say. Uh, Patrick DeMarco, I can always tell people that I coached a player who played in the Super Bowl and went on to play in the Pro Bowl, yeah. and he was a great player for you. I was so uh, excited when you signed him. Yeah, I remember uh, uh, our coach that we were he hauling around. I said, well, let me watch the tape on Patrick and watch it. Yeah. Uh, went down offering him a scholarship, and I think he's played in the NFL. Oh, yeah, yeah he's, he's a throwback. He's years. a fullback uh, like Tom yeah, Hathbin or, uh, you know, Larry Zonka, that oh, type he, of thing. He played fullback and tight end for us. And, and you threw a back. touchdown to him against Alabama. I remember that in the championship well, game. Yeah, he yeah. blocked uh, excellent blocker and uh, one of the best attitude guys on the team. So, uh, Patrick, uh, yeah, he was a fantastic gamecock and really enjoyed coaching him. I wish you had come here, but... You made the right signing. So anyhow, historically, I, I know that when you came to Gainesville, I think Nappies was one of your restaurant, favorite yeah. hangouts, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the Swamp Restaurant, you know, came in a little bit later. later. And mm -hmm. so I see this this Spurrier's Gridiron, gridiron Grill as like the next huge, it, it's double or triple the size of those places, mm -hmm. but it's the kind of place where everybody's going to want to go and hang out and see their friends, and it sounds really, really exciting for the community. Yeah, I hope so, and I believe it will be. Uh, I know uh, we got uh, Coach Mullen. I think the Thursday night radio show is scheduled to be from the restaurant, and that always brings in a nice crowd and so forth. So, uh, yeah, we'll have uh, we'll have some commotion out there, but again. We want it to be a place where you, you know you're going to get excellent food in a wonderful, fun environment. And you know, it's great. I've been out there you know, to the movie theater, to some of the uh, restaurants out there. There's great parking. So for you know people that are listening, if you ever want to go out there, uh, it's an outstanding place. Uh, as far as getting in and out, and uh, mm -hmm. there, there's so it's going to really be. Um, a huge focal point for uh, Gainesville. So I, I want to. No question. Yeah, I want to just let you know how much. And, we and you're hiring, it. right? You guys are hiring. We've been in the process of hiring uh, for about a month or so, and uh, but really, I think most of the team will, will get together uh, right before we open February, January, February, March in that area. So I know there's been a lot on social media. People are you're still looking at people, you know, for the different mm -hmm. many jobs in a restaurant. Right. They can go on the website. They can go on the Facebook page for Spurrier's Gridiron Grill, and they can find out what they need to know, right? Right. Uh, I'm not sure how many more uh, hiring sessions we've got scheduled, but there may be some in the future. Three okay. More. We've got three more. Yes, our producer is telling us three more. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It, it must be really fun, though, uh, getting involved in it. And I know that you're just not going to be the name on the restaurant. You're going to take an active part in being there and making sure that, uh, you know, folks can say hello. And Well, I hope so. Yeah, hopefully I'll have a, a, a chair for me there. With, uh, oh, I think they will. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, head ball coach on it or something like that. Yeah, well, you so, got to yeah. have the table, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know if I'll have a reserve table. Maybe a chair that uh, <laughs> they uh, could pull out or yeah, something like that. They'll <laughs> save for me in the restaurant there, especially up at the advisor bar. Maybe a, a chair up there with HPC on it. Uh, so if, if that's uh, if that's available, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> We've only got about a minute or so left, <laughs> but tomorrow again is the Tennessee game. Mm -hmm. I know you've got a lot of funny Tennessee stories. I, I remember the the famous "You can't say citrus without UT." <laughs> Anything else you want to tell us about Tennessee? Oh, uh, you know, most of all those corny little jokes we I, I would tell either about <laughs> Tennessee or FSU or whoever. It was in the summertime when we had all these Gator clubs, and, and usually it was in Orlando or something. And so I'd tell some corny joke, and of course our fans would love it. Uh, but anyway, I was at the uh, SEC uh, dinner, they have it before the championship game, and myself, and they, they have a legend from every school, and for some reason I was one of them. Uh, one year, Peerless Price, the wide yeah. receiver 
for Tennessee was being inducted in it. Mm. And he, he said, Coach, uh, you probably don't realize, in my four years in Tennessee, he said, we only lost three SEC games. And they were all you guys. And I started thinking, is that right? And I started thinking about how good Tennessee was back then. And so they would they would have won a bunch of SECs, and then maybe they were due to win that one in '98 yeah. and so forth. But he said anyway. He said that uh, you can't, can't spell citrus out of UT in it. That yeah. is actually pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so coach, he thought it was pretty good. We have a lot of uh, Gator fans in South Florida. We are a statewide firm. We have an office in Gainesville, Ocala, and Cary is running the Fort Lauderdale office. Okay. So maybe a quick yeah. shout out to. All the Gators and Gator Nation down in Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Oh, yeah, the Gator Clubs of Lauderdale, Miami, and so forth. We thoroughly enjoyed uh, visiting those. My wife is from Fort Lauderdale. We went to the old Fort Lauderdale High School. Flying Elves. Oh, Flying really? Elves, yeah. <laughs> I know exactly so, where that is. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, we, we have a fond memory of Fort Lauderdale, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, we're going to have yeah. lots of uh, Gator fans coming up from South Florida. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that's part of the concept is this is going to be a place to go and yeah. hang out, you mm -hmm. know, instead of uh, waiting till the last minute, come up on Thursday and spend a couple yeah. days up here. And uh, you're going to have brunches, I think, on uh, what, the weekend, Saturday, Sunday? Oh, definitely. Yes. Okay. It'll, so, be, it'll be open every day, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, <laughs> Coach, no, yeah, it's right no, off so. the interstate. That's what's <laughs> wonderful. Uh, people coming up I-75, get off Archer Road. It's just... well. I'll tell you, I'm so excited yeah. Yeah. Uh, to be coming up there and hanging out. Yeah. And yeah, it's going to be our new Sunday hangout. Or, you know, if we're out of town, Saturday hangout. And uh, so anyhow, I just want to thank you so much for, Absolutely. for joining you. us you, today. Appreciate it. Oh, and, you. Uh, you know, uh, we would love to invite you back sometime in the future. You can give us okay. an update on what's going on and let's get this thing going. Absolutely. You are watching Melden Law and Friends, a service of Melden Law, a statewide law firm with its primary office in Gainesville and also with offices in Fort Lauderdale. Kerry Melden runs that office and in Oak Gala. We'll be right back. Thanks so much, Coach Spurrier, for being here. Good to be with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I was in an accident. Someone ran red light and hit me and I was hurt. You don't know where to turn. Luckily, I called Jeffrey. These big insurance companies, they don't want you to win. They truly don't. But Jeffrey and his firm and the people that work here, they just really fight for you. You call the law offices of Jeffrey Belden because you're going to need help and they will help you. The Melden Law Firm from the beginning has been built on giving back to the community. I enjoy coming to work as much today as I did in 1971 when I opened my practice. I don't look at this as a job, I look at it as serving other people. While we're alive, what better feeling can you achieve than knowing that you've helped other people and thereby you enrich your own life. Hello and welcome back to Melden Law and Friends, a weekly podcast brought to you by Melden Law, a statewide law firm with its primary office in Gainesville, Florida, and also with offices in Fort Lauderdale and Ocala, Florida. We are a firm that specializes in personal injury cases as well as criminal defense cases. You can take a look at our website, www.meldenlaw.com, or give us a call anytime, toll free 24-7 at 1-800-373-8000, wherever you are. A Meldon will talk to you, and uh, we will certainly do our best to steer you in the right direction with your case. Jeffrey, today is Friday, December 4th. What a segment we just had with the help with the head ball coach. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, uh, I, I so admire everything Coach Spurrier has done uh, for the University of Florida and Gainesville, and now with the restaurant uh, uh, coming in, it's going to really be fabulous and i know you and i'll be there you, you might have got a little scoop out of him there you threw the question hey will you ever coach again and he didn't say no he didn't say no so who knows but in running with our concept of melden lion friends we've got two friends of the firm that we're very proud of we're very proud to call them people who work with us but uh, we're just so happy with all they have done jason and sarah hedges welcome to the program yeah thanks, thanks for, for having us here. yeah we're excited well, um, of course, you're, you're well-known in Gainesville. You two are the creators, producers of the annual Tom Petty Birthday Bash. But for those statewide who may not know what the Tom Petty Birthday Bash is, why don't you say a few words about that? 
Sure. Um, well, the Tom Petty Birthday Bash is a music festival that celebrates uh, Tom's uh, birthday in October, usually around October 20th, which is his birthday. And for you, for those that don't know, Tom Petty was from Gainesville and grew up in Gainesville. So this was his hometown. So it's a hometown celebration, and we have lots of bands from around the country and food and art, and it's just a really good time. Uh, over over and, the weekend. Yeah, and for those who don't know, Gainesville is home to a lot of rock and roll legends and oh, famers. absolutely. So Gainesville always has had a huge music history here, and these guys have had a wonderful part of that history as well. Well, this guy in particular, we've talked about it on the show, Jeffrey Melvin was Tom Petty's first lawyer. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was pretty cool because... Uh, even at a young age, you could see that uh, Tom was completely focused on uh, his career and that music was uh, his chosen uh, life's work, and he did it about as well as anybody we know. He sure did. And uh, for those who may be wondering why Jason is sitting holding a guitar, he's also a very accomplished musician in his own right. You, you, you've had solo material, but also... You have been the leader driving force behind the Petty Tribute Band, Heavy Petty. Mm -hmm. And we, we just might get a, a song out of him in the next session. The song, Sarah is, of course, a very talented singer in her own right. So I think we'll be hearing from them in the next segment. But getting back to the Tom Petty Birthday Bash. So the first one was in 2017. Yeah. Maybe explain for the benefit of everybody how that's grown. Yeah, so I had the tribute band uh, that we just started for fun. And it's 10 years ago we started. So after he died... Uh, it was a shock to everyone, of course, around the world and, and in Gainesville. So we decided to put on a free festival. We looked at the calendar, um, and we noticed that his birthday was a couple weeks away. So we gathered our friends, and uh, we put on a concert. It was like a five- or six-hour concert. And it, people came. Uh, word got around. People came from all around the country. Some people drove a 1,000 miles. And it was just a real celebration of his life. And there were, you know, laughter and tears. And everyone demanded it almost to, to happen every year after that people were like you should do this again and so we kind of learned how to put this music festival and it's turned into an annual music festival now and it's just really great um we showcase a lot of emerging artists there right so it's not just tom petty cover bands it's, right. it's up and coming artists Low Cut Connie, so many others, Eaton Archer, maybe tell the viewers a little bit about that. Yeah, a lot of bands from Gainesville and from all around the country that are, uh, that are out there working hard, uh, oh. writing music, and they come together. And they do some Tom Petty songs, but then they, they get to show off their original music, too. So it's a way, it's kind of a... It's, um, it's a platform for young emerging artists. That's what we're definitely highlighting. And, and that's what Tom wanted to do, really, yeah. toward the end of his career before his untimely passing. That's what he was trying to do with the shelters and other bands. He was looking to produce up and coming bands. They have to carry the torch. So that's what we're we're trying to do here in Gainesville is sharing that legacy with new generations and just having a lot of fun. The, the bash happened so organically in 2017 and the fans really make it happen. And that's how we're, we're still making this happen today is it's all because of the fans. And yeah. also, I must say, it's all, a lot of times to do my wife here. <laughs> not to yeah. say, you're the artist, she's yeah, the brains. She, she, no uh, offense. She, uh, <laughs> that, I will not contest that. Uh, uh, absolutely. She is the marketing director uh, for for the past years and also this year uh, that we just did. We just celebrated uh, virtual. a virtual festival. And it was really an opportunity to get a hold of some of the bigger stars that we most likely wouldn't be able to come to Gainesville. And they all showed up. And we had people like Adam Sandler and um, Chris Stapleton. Sutherland, yeah. A lot of all-star cast. And it was on uh, Amazon and XM, Sirius XM, Tom Petty, Channel 31. So it was a lot of work. Uh, we thought, you know, doing a virtual festival, maybe we'd get off the hook a little bit this year and it'd be less stress. But it was a different type of work. Um, but we pulled it off, and it was a big success, and um, <clears throat> we got to really showcase what we do here in Gainesville and also at the hospital where I work, and uh, it was a really a great thing. Um, well, one reason for that, though, <laughs> is one big change over last year to this year was that the Tom Petty family, and it was, it was pretty well known, there were some legal issues they had to resolve, but they resolved them toward the end of 2019, and they hired a management company called Red Light Management, I understand, mm -hmm. and you, in fact, the two of you, met with Red Light Management many, many times. They came down to Gainesville, you went up to New York, had meetings with the Petty family, and what you are doing is an official, official sanctioned event of Tom Petty family, Petty Legacy they're called, right? Correct, yeah. yes. 
-hmm. Yeah, we've worked really hard to have a great working relationship with the family and red light management. We've tried Mm -hmm. to do everything the right way. That was something that was really important to us from the very beginning was to make sure it's something that Tom would have wanted and something that his family would have wanted. And Jason's formed a wonderful relationship with Bruce Petty, Tom's younger brother, and that kind of helped us get in with the rest of his family. <laughs> you know, I was really excited that, you know, you were able to overcome the uh, COVID restrictions because I, obviously nobody is out there performing live right now in, right. in, in big concert settings. But t- tell us a little bit about how that evolved, how you wound up getting this amazing platform, you know, when you're talking about <laughs> You know, Sirius, you know, Tom Petty channel, which is one of the top mm-hmm. Sirius channels there are. Mm-hmm. For those of you that don't know, Sirius XM channel 31 right. is the Tom Petty channel. They were here in Gainesville. Yeah. You know, it, it was as though uh, the whole uh, Tom Petty nation was looking at Gainesville. Yeah. And then Amazon comes in. Tell us a little well, bit of the evolution yeah. of that. <clears throat> so this year's a special year, Ed being what would have been his 70th birthday. And also they released an album, um, Wildflowers and All the Rest, which was kind of a double album, originally meant to be a double album, but they only uh, released, I think, 12 songs. So there was all these other songs that they released. So those two things were really important on its own. And we were planning on having an actual festival, but then we realized that that wasn't possible this year. And for people's safety, we decided to do it virtually. And um, with the help of Red Light, who has access to all these great artist, we were able to make it much bigger in a sense that it reached a lot of people, a lot of people around the world. And you can still see them. portions of it, right, on YouTube? I don't know that the entire show I think you can has find been preserved, but you can see it on YouTube. Yeah, I believe it's on Amazon Prime, too. Amazon the Prime, video okay. uh, portion, and then... And then it also lives on Sirius XM as well. Yeah. And to give you two a shout out, you had the lead in to the actual video performance. You did what, two hours on the radio, introing, yeah. you talked about yourselves, you talked about the own work, your own work, but also introed a lot of these up and coming national and regional bands. That was really exciting to see these bands doing these uh, different covers of, of his songs and doing it their own way. And a lot of the bands that we're friends with that are merging, and I think that was probably the most fun was that seeing what they came up with and they were they were all really really good oh, what kind amazing. of feedback have you all gotten from you know everybody that uh, was listening we've gotten wonderful feedback i mean the, the bands are really appreciative because that was some of their very first time being on sirius xm <laughs> and so they're just super excited and and they circulated the show throughout the whole entire week and then a lot of the fans have been with us from the very beginning so they've been just blown away by the amount of, of coverage we get every year and the new involvement that we have every year is really good. Yeah, but this, now the, this became a worldwide event. It's been Gainesville, Florida mm-hmm. pretty sure. much. Mm-hmm. Now all of a sudden it exploded to the Do you whole have world. any numbers on how many people watched it over the course of the weekend? I believe the, the video portion was over 400,000 people throughout wow. that weekend. And, and I think they're still trying to work on some of the analytics. Because mm-hmm. there were multiple platforms. You can see it on yeah. TikTok, you can see it on Facebook, you can see it on YouTube. We've only got a couple of minutes left in this segment, but I'm hoping the two of you will stay for the next segment. So our <laughs> yeah. listeners and viewers, we're actually on multiple platforms too. We're on YouTube, we're on the Melden Law Facebook page, we're also on several uh, music platforms, but no video, just, just the sound. So, uh, I believe we're on Google, we're on Spotify and several others. So for the benefit of all of you out there, I think we'll get Jason and Sarah to play a song or two and uh, probably one you know very, very well that's uh, associated with Tom Petty. Let me just ask you this very quickly before we wrap up this segment. What are your goals artistically, both in terms of Heavy Petty and, and your own music? Um, well, I just write, I'm writing a lot more songs. Uh, I'm hoping to put out a solo album maybe this year or next year, probably next year. Um, and so it's been a real creative time for me. And of course, my work at the hospital is, is always an inspiration. That's a huge point. And, yeah. um, and uh, yeah, for those of you uh, who don't know, the Arts and Medicine, which is one of our charities uh, this year, is my day job where I work at the bedside of uh, patients in all the units. It's a little difficult now with everything going on, but we're able to use technology and things like Zoom to, to reach out. But it's a program that's been uh, it's going on its 30th year, 30th year this year. Wow. So we're really excited about that, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, let's talk some more about that because mm-hmm. actually um, the Tom Petty birthday bash uh, 
sponsors the arts and medicine program, creates donations for it, and I think uh, mm -hmm. that's a terrific tie. And we'll uh, get back uh, to everybody in just a few minutes. You are watching. Break. Yes, we will. <laughs> you are watching. Melden Law and Friends, a podcast, a weekly podcast from the Melden Law Firm. Today is Friday, December 4th, 2020, when this is airing. Thank you so much for being a part of the podcast, and stick around. You may hear a song or two from Jason and Sarah. Being a client at Melden Law was special because I felt like I was really being listened to, and I felt welcome by the entire staff. If I were in a situation where I needed legal advice and help, I would absolutely reach out to Jeffrey because his reputation alone speaks for itself. But on a personal level, I know that he would take care of me and help me solve those problems and I would feel safe with him. I was driving behind a lady and very suddenly she moved out of the way. There was a log laying in the road. And when I hit my brakes, I went on top of the log. I had two herniated discs. I just haven't been the same since. Jeffrey Melton fought for me all the way. Him and his team really went there for me. Throughout the whole lawsuit, he made sure that my bills was paid. It was never no whenever I called him and asked him for something. Hello and welcome back to Melden Law and Friends, a service of Melden Law, a statewide law firm with offices in Gainesville, Fort Lauderdale and Ocala, Florida. We have an incredible show today. We had the head ball coach, Steve Spurrier, on for the first segment. We've got Jason and Sarah Hedges, uh, the producers, the creators of the Tom Petty Birthday Bash, but you've been a little bit involved in this. Melvin Law has been a sponsor of this one from the start. Yes, we've been really uh, blessed that we can uh, get involved with the Tom Petty Birthday Bash. Number one, it's a great community organization. And secondly, it's just a lot of fun working on it. Yeah, it you is. know, we really we get to to know you know Sarah and Jason really well, and uh, it's it's a labor of love, I think, for everybody, and it's pretty exciting. And for me, I've been really uh, pleased to see the growth that uh, the festival has had. Why don't you talk about like from year one to year two to year three? It's just been and you, and this year is what year four. Yeah, it'll be it'll be coming up, I guess, on year four. Yeah, that's wow, right. that's amazing. Um, time goes by; it just sort of grew fast and organically. Um, people who were fans of Tom Petty, not just here in Gainesville, but from all around the world. I think we've had uh, six, seven different countries and forty-eight states. Yeah, people that came last 10, year, ten thousand people. people. So it's 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 just kind of grown, and it's um, it's been a lot of fun. It's very community oriented. The people, like you said, are just coming out and enjoying you know, music and food and art. And uh, it's a real love fest, I think. And yeah, it just keeps growing. So I want to know about next year. What, what's the, All right. what, what, do so, we, what can we let our fans know? So we, we got to have a tease. <laughs> right, right, right. So we got some pretty big legs this last year uh, with the amount of artists that we had. And it was just an all-star cast. So we are going to, uh, we're going to continue that. And we're looking at, um, having it around, uh, what's the dates that we were thinking? We haven't announced anything officially, but we like to do it close to his birthday, and his birthday is on October 20th. So I think it's maybe we're looking at the date right now, the 22nd, yeah. 24th. Plus that's the, that, that's the open week, right? Right. There's no Florida game that week. We don't want to step on the football. We know how important <laughs> football is. Oh, and hotel rooms yeah, too, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we want to, this year, I hope there's so many fans that come to the festival, they're going to fill up all the hotel rooms. I think uh, so. Yeah. They have in the past. Yeah. So a few more words though about the tie-in with arts and medicine. I know that yeah. is, that's your passion because you've worked there. Right. You, you all did a wonderful song. Oh my. My gosh, that's on Facebook. Oh, right. uh, that's on YouTube, uh -huh. right? The song, yeah, the collaborative song you did. Yeah, so I've been uh, a musician in residence with uh, UF Shands uh, Arts and Medicine program at Shands Hospital uh, for six years now. And it, the program's going on its 30th year this year. And it, it's made up of uh, musicians. I think there's a team of five or six musicians on staff now. And then visual artists and dancing, dancers and people, liter literary people. Uh, who all work at the bedside with patients. And we are not only uh, the leader of this type of program in the United States, but we also help start up other programs like ours abroad. Um, we spent time, we spent the last mm -hmm. 10 years in Africa, Northern Ireland, other places like that. So I'm really, uh, really proud of the work that we do at the hospital. 
And it only survives with grants and donations, but it survived a long time now. And I think it's only gonna keep growing. So um, at a time like this where there's been a, it's been a very trying year, I think people need art and culture and music. Yeah. It's really a healing thing. And we believe in the power of, of music and art to heal. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's, I'm really passionate about it. So what do you say we hear a song? Sure. Uh, <laughs> and I think the song that you did collaboratively with everybody is the song you're about to play. Um, I think it? you were talking about Wildflowers. Right. Which is an appropriate song uh, because it was the release of the album, of course. And, okay. Um, I will try that one out for you. You remember how to sing it? I think so. <laughs> right, we'll try it. people go to find out information about the birthday bash about the two of you they want to look up your music <laughs> not just your festival what do they do yeah, well, they can find most of that information on tompettybirthdaybash.com also they can find out information about the arts and medicine program and something that you didn't mention was that we created a fund called oh. music and medicine in 2018 that supports arts and medicine so you can donate to oh, there yeah. and learn more about that and our history mm -hmm. and a little bit about us on that website that's so, TomPettyBirthdayBash.com. TomPettyBirthdayBash.com. Just like it's spelled, yeah. just like it sounds, and you'll learn all about <laughs> Jason and Sarah, what they've done with this wonderful event. I know you have some original music as well, mm -hmm. and um, where can people find out what you're doing individually? I know you did a great song about a year or so ago, Big Jam Party, where you oh, talked yeah. about all these artists, um, Bo Diddley, Tom, George Harrison, others, and... Where can people find these oh, songs? Right. Well, that, I don't know where that song can be found. Maybe on YouTube. I think you've got a video uh, of YouTube? it. That's yeah. on YouTube. But I put out an album in 2017 called Mixed Signals. And she's called Hedges, my last name. And the album is Mixed Signals. And I think that's on You can iTunes. find that on hedgesband.com. Mm -hmm. And also on iTunes and Spotify. She knows. She knows <laughs> I'm his yeah. manager. Yeah. Well, for, for sure. those of you that may not know... Um, Sarah all, also has a very prominent role at Melvin Law as our director of social media, and uh, 
and in addition to raising Parker. <laughs> yeah, they had a little boy a little over a year ago. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you've been really busy this past yes. year, right? <laughs> we have been really busy. We've been having a lot of fun, but it's... It's a lot of work what we do, but... It's amazing. I tell you, she's got a baby in one hand, a computer in the other, and she's got a phone in one ear, and she's just juggling everything. I mean, it's it's really, truly Super amazing. mama. But I want to say something, too, and maybe this would be a whole other show, but I, I know the viewers at some point, someday, are going to want to hear these fantastic... Because I've heard them for years now, these fantastic stories that you guys had, all the bands you booked back in the days, and the great Southern Music Hall, and uh, that may be for another time, but... Uh, I'm, I'm throwing that out there for the viewers. So that'll be another time. We've talked about that. I used to run the shows at the University of Florida. Jeffrey owned the Great Southern Music Hall. It was a real magical time back then in the 80s and the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So many wonderful shows played here. So, yeah, we will talk about that another time. Yeah, and for those of you that uh, haven't read the book um, Music uh, Everywhere by Marty Gerard, mm -hmm. you know, it's a story of the Gainesville music scene. And I see what you're doing as a continuation of that, you know, dating back to the 1960s, really. Gainesville was at the epicenter as far as uh, great music. We've got nine Rock and Roll Hall of Famers here, and including Tom Petty and all of the Heartbreakers. So uh, Gainesville has a special place, and uh, we're really excited to have you here. This won't be your last time. No, definitely okay, not. Okay, because we got a lot more to talk about. That's right. But uh, I think it's time to do a wrap on the show right yeah. now. Right. We will have you back as uh, more details about the Tom Petty Birthday Bash 2021 become more clear. We'll have a lot of updates on that. You are watching Melden Law and Friends, a weekly podcast of Melden Law your statewide law firm with offices in Gainesville, Fort Lauderdale, and Ocala, Florida. Take a look at our website. I think I'm pointing to it correctly, <laughs> www.meldenlaw.com, or call us anytime, 24-7, 1-800-373-8000. Our primary practice areas are personal injury cases, auto cases, big truck cases, and we handle criminal defense matters. So, But whatever it is, give us a call. We'll steer you in the right direction. We will be right back. It's important to hire the right attorney, not the cheapest attorney, and here's why. DUIs carry with them mandatory penalties that will follow you for years and years and years. Meldon Law has been representing people charged with DUI in the state of Florida for over 40 years. If you've been arrested for DUI, you can call us at Meldon Law at 1-800-373-8000. Welcome back to Meldon Law and Friends, a service of Meldon Law, a statewide law firm with offices in South Florida and also with offices in Gainesville and Ocala, Florida. I've got Jeffrey Meldon on the right, Carrie Meldon on the left, and Carrie, the, the South Florida office serves the entire Tri-County area, correct? Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties? Yes. Uh, we have an office uh, right in the middle of the Tri-County area, and uh, we surface Miami-Dade, Broward County, which includes Fort Lauderdale, mm -hmm. and Palm Beach County, which includes Boca Raton, Delray, and West Palm Beach. Pompano Beach, my hometown. That's included. <laughs> Tanner lives there, in fact. Tanner Demery, one of your attorneys. Absolutely. So we, we uh, try to make sure that if someone wants to meet with an attorney, uh, we can meet with a, a, a client within one hour in person or meet with the client through video conference or telephone immediately. So we make ourselves available to our clients in South Florida, just like we do in North Florida. And the primary practice areas, as Jeffrey has done from the start, personal injury cases, auto cases, big truck cases, premises liability, and criminal defense, right? That's correct. So the majority of our cases are going to be either DUI defense or car accident cases. But we do uh, medical malpractice. We will do premises liability. We'll do general criminal uh, but I'd say our focus in our firm is car accident cases, truck accident cases, uh, and uh, DUI defense. So those that's the main uh, focus of our firm, although uh, we are experienced in other matters as well. So you've seen the, the first two segments. You were involved in the Steve Spurrier interview. What would you think of that? <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Well, I can tell you uh, Steve is a, uh, a hero of mine. I was 12 years old when Steve was hired by the Gators, and I was born and sure. raised in Gainesville. So for me, you know, he played a pivotal uh, 
uh, kind of a, a pivotal influence in my life because at 12 years old, you're not really interested in girls or drinking or going out. What you're interested not in... Not that you ever became interested. <laughs> not that I ever became interested in all this. But, but at 12 years old, I was interested in reading the box scores in, this, in the sports uh, section of the Gainesville Sun, right? And uh, I loved baseball. I loved football. Uh, I loved tennis. I loved every sport. But when the Gators uh, started uh, kicking butt under Steve Spurrier, it was amazing. And, it really was. And really, the uh, the amount of confidence and swagger that he brought to the field uh, made you feel like you were awesome. Uh, even though you weren't playing, you're like, okay, this is my guy. I'm a Gator, and we're winners, right? And it's always fun to allow yourself. Well, you've realized, though, being now in South Florida for going on four years, that the Gator Nation is very big, very active, very vocal in South Florida. Correct. So we're very uh, pleased to uh, be the official sponsor of the Florida Gators, and uh, we've, we're also the official partner of the Florida Gators. I don't know. Uh, if you want to differentiate, no, I, I think uh, that's something your your father has worked long and hard on. Well, we are, in fact. Well, Dad moved to uh, sponsor. Yeah, Dad moved to Gainesville in the early seventies, and you know he's been a ardent supporter of the Gators uh, since he moved down here. And for them to choose the Meldon Law Firm as to be the official sponsors of the Florida Gators, uh, we're very mm-hmm. happy that the uh, the UAA, the um, IMG Academy, and the University of Florida decided that we were a good representation uh, to be an official uh, partner of the University of Florida Gators. So uh, we're really happy uh, to be um, associated with them. And in South Florida, like you said, there's so many Gator fans in Miami, in Fort Lauderdale, in Palm Beach, that we hope that any of those uh, folks down there will give us a call, regardless of what their legal matter is, maybe even just to sure. get some of our books that we've written about how to buy auto insurance or what to do in, in the event of an accident. That's an excellent point. You know, Jeffrey, you put so much time and effort into the law, into the website, www.meldenlaw.com. It's not just something to tout the achievements of the law firm. There's lots of community information, how-to books, books on buying car insurance that you've put so much time into, books on how to improve your chances on a personal injury case. We, we really like to uh, share things for free with uh, the community. And in South Florida, a lot of people uh, don't realize yet that they need uninsured motorist coverage because the other person, especially in South Florida, does, uh, does not have adequate insurance to protect you. Even if it's their fault, they still have to have insurance else you're never going to get anything. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, post the link on our website below. That allows you to download your book, How to Buy Florida Florida Auto Insurance, which in South Florida, you really, really need to have that book more so than anywhere else because it's the Wild West in Miami, in Fort Lauderdale, and Palm Beach where people don't have adequate insurance. So uh, what what we're going to do is we'll post a link so they can download your free book, How to Buy Florida Auto Insurance. And it might be the the most important thing that you're going to read in 2020 to protect yourself and your family. And I promise it's not homework. On one page, <laughs> everything is summarized. And uh, it's it's just uh, an, a great informational uh, package uh, for you and your family. Plus, we throw in a bunch of other uh, fun gifts like uh, pop sockets and other things. So uh, go to uh, either meldenlaw.com or uh, give us a call, um, 1-800-373-373. 8,000 and just say uh, you want the uh, book on buying Florida auto insurance. Absolutely. We'll, we'll get it to you. Carrie, I know you also, uh, you were sitting off to the side because we didn't have enough seats, but you watched the segment with Jason and Sarah Hedges. And I didn't realize this till recently, but you've got some history with Jason. You yes. guys went to high school together. Jason Hedges and myself graduated from Gainesville High School in the same year in 1996. No kidding. No, yeah, it's like, <laughs> honestly, there's no kidding around. This is 100% true. So Jason is a Gainesville um, legend now. He's he's one of the um, torch carriers for the rock community here in Gainesville. And he's uh, very well known. And, and I'm, you know, it's it's kind of shocking you get to continue these connections. Look, look, look how he's grown. I remember yeah. you telling me when I first joined the firm a little over four years ago, you said, Chris, I want you to check out my good friend Jason. He's got this band. This was before 
of course, about a year before the untimely passing of Tom Petty, but mm-hmm. you were telling me all about him. We did check him out. I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy sings great. He sounds exactly like Tom Petty, but also has great music on his own. Mm-hmm. You know, and Chris has been instrumental in, in elevating Jason the last couple of years. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but Chris has uh, an ex- a very, mm-hmm. very uh, well-developed reputation in the music industry. Well, your dad's the, no slouch either. Throughout <laughs> the entire state of Florida. I mean, you've yeah. probably done shows in South Florida. Which, uh, I, I, I'm I did. just guessing this. At one know? point in time, I did. Uh, right when I was Buddy Hoot and I, your pal, he and I uh, formed a little concert organization, Unicorn, that uh, did concerts back in the mid-'80s. Uh, we did Melissa Manchester, Missing Persons, all sorts of people. So, yeah, I've dabbled in concert promotion, but... With that said, um, I know I speak for Jeffrey and the firm. We're just so proud of Jason and Sarah. And we've seen the evolution of that Tom Petty birthday yeah. bash. And we want to urge our viewers and listeners statewide, whether you're in Fort Lauderdale, Miami, West Palm Beach, you need to come to this event. If you love the music of Tom Petty, it will be, we're going to say it now, the 22nd through the 24th. It's subject to change. and One never knows what will happen between now and then. But that should be the weekend, don't you think? Well, we have to do it close to October 20th, and, right. and usually we look for the uh, bye week when there's not a Florida football game in town, so there's uh, hotels and uh, places for people to stay, so that's the logical week, but we have a lot of planning to do, and uh, it, the, the planning has uh, already started for the Tom Petty birthday bash, and Melvin Law has been a major sponsor for the event and will continue to sponsor uh, the birthday bash. So we really are looking forward to everybody from South Florida coming up and uh, visit uh, Gainesville. We'll have a booth there as well. We always have our tent. We'll have information about the firm. Uh, So please come by, say hello to Jeffrey, say hello to Carrie, myself, everyone from the firm will be there. And it's it's an amazing event. And uh, continuing on the South Florida uh, connection, uh, briefly, I wanted to let you guys know, uh, the the Dolphins have a big game this weekend. You know they're going to oh, try to make the playoffs. That's right. And uh, they got a big game in a couple of days. And then in the next uh, couple months, Gator fans may be traveling down to my neck of the woods uh, to Hard Rock Stadium for for two reasons. One is if we beat Alabama, uh, there's a possibility they may hold the semifinals and the finals at the uh, Orange Bowl uh, because of COVID restrictions. It's not. Set in stone, but there's discussions about it. But the championship game is definitely at Orange Bowl Stadium. And if we don't beat Alabama, we're probably going to be playing the University of Miami Hurricanes in the Orange Bowl. <laughs> uh, either way, there's a very either good way, chance, a good chance will be that the Gators will be down there. The Mi- University of Miami, uh, they're playing Duke this weekend. And uh, it'd be great to have a – if we can't make the playoffs, I'd love to play Miami and have that great rivalry sure. game down there in Miami. I think it'd be good for the state, good for the players, good for the recruits. Kerry, really quick, we've only got about a minute and a half left in this segment. Tell our viewers a little bit about your specific practice areas. So if you've been injured or arrested, please give me a call at 1-800-373-8000. There's free consultations. On our auto accident cases, we don't charge a fee unless you recover. Now, that may have sounded like a, a lawyer's uh, advertisement, <laughs> because it is. Uh, basically, the truth, it's the truth. Even, even uh, with costs, you yes. know, you don't know it's anything Yes, and, if there's and, no recovery. So our best cases come from our existing clients. And the, and the reason that the existing clients refer us cases is because we take care of them. Okay? And so what we try to do is make sure uh, that all of our clients will be fans of our firm because they know that we're going to treat them like family. And we're fans of them. We, you know, we make sure we put them on a priority list. So if you're if you're one of our existing clients, you give us a call twenty four seven. We'll get back to you uh, usually within twenty four hours, uh, except when it's a holiday weekend. But even then, Chris is on the phone tw- <laughs> all the time. You know, we'll definitely get back to you as quick as we possibly can. Jeffrey, anything in closing? I just want to uh, say it's a great um, episode. We want to welcome everybody who's a, a new viewer or listener to a Melvin Law and Friends podcast and that uh, please spread the word. Uh, let everybody know. Uh, just go to uh, Melvin Law uh, slash uh, MeldenLaw.com or MeldenLaw.com. You'll find or our it. Facebook page. You know, just look for Melvin Law. Yeah, Facebook, Google. But um, we want to thank everybody for uh, joining us and uh, please uh, uh, spread the word. 
Once again, you have been watching Meldon Law and Friends, or listening, whatever the case may be, a weekly service of Meldon Law, your statewide, statewide law firm with an office in South Florida, covering the entire Tri-County South Florida area, and also with offices in Gainesville and Ocala. We will be back next week. Thank you so much for watching and listening.